Hello and welcome back to Shakespeare. We are working on the sonnets and today we've got sonnet 67 which is kind of related to sonnet 66 from yesterday. If you remember yesterday's was kind of depressing. Shakespeare was talking about how corrupt the whole world has gotten and what is the point in continuing to live when you have to put up with all of this garbage but he came to the conclusion by the end of it that if he didn't continue to live, if he were to die, then his love would be left alone. So he's holding on to that one little thing of, I have to stay alive for the sake of the fair youth. But then Sonnet 67 picks up with, ah, wherefore with infection should he live and with his presence grace impiety that sin by him advantage should achieve and lace itself with his society. Why should false painting imitate his cheek, and steal dead seeing of his living hue? Why should poor beauty indirectly seek roses of shadow since his rose is true? Why should he live now nature bankrupt is, beggared of blood to blush through lively veins? For she hath no exchequer now, but his, and, proud of many, lives upon his gains. Oh, him she stores to show what wealth she had in days long since, before these last so bad. So when I first read it, I started to wonder if maybe the, the fair youth had become ill, but reading a couple of other analyses of it, it sounds like nature has become ill by the end of the play. And maybe meaning that it's winter time, that things aren't so beautiful, stuff like that, but whatever. Getting, getting back to the beginning of the sonnet and what he's actually talking about, in Sonnet 66, he had been questioning the purpose of his own existence and why it should continue to go on. And here he's sort of questioning why the fair youth should have to live in a world that is so tainted by corruption and evil and horrible things that, you know, all of these people are just taking advantage of the fair youth. People are using him as their muse to create these paintings that don't capture his full beauty. People are trying to, you know, paint him, but they miss out on, on capturing the, the liveliness of the fair youth and, and the, the true beauty of the fair youth. And he, he talks about nature not being able to infuse the world with beauty anymore either, saying that nature has, has lost its vibrancy and has to draw from the fair youth in order to try to make the world beautiful. So nature is holding on to the existence of the fair youth as sort of a symbol of, hey, look, I made something pretty once, even though nature isn't making any pretty things anymore. So it's, it's, it doesn't quite get to a nice, lovely conclusion as to why the fair youth should continue to exist. It almost makes it sound like the fair youth is being held captive by nature or is imprisoned or enslaved or something like that to the world around him, this corrupt world around him that just uses him for its own selfish gains. So we'll see. In Sonnet 68, do we come to any, any happier conclusions? I don't know. We'll find out tomorrow. I'll see you then. Mwah.